forgot to turn on the um, uh, the recording of this of the session. So to repeat again, Android is the operating system. It operates makes all Google phones operate in exactly the same fashion, uh, which is nice. So if you if you buy a different phone, if you can get a cheaper phone or you 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 get a different phone, it, it will have exactly the same look and feel as we say. We call that the look and feel. Uh, how, what it looks like, if you look at the phone, they will look the same. And the feel means the buttons can be in the same place and so forth. So uh, and I mentioned that Google now has their own phone called the Pixel. And um, because it's Google, <clears throat> they will obviously keep the Pixel always updated, right? So uh, uh, when the day comes that I decide to you know, pony up and trade in my, my trusty cell phone, I'm almost certainly going to get a Google Pixel. You know, they cost the same or a little bit less, in fact. But we know that because it's Google, they're not going to play these sort of games that, you know, some of the other manufacturers play. Okay, so just to quickly review again for everybody, I'll ask a few questions. If you know all the stuff, we'll, we'll move on. So here we have our phone, right? So we, we call this a phone, but of course, it's not really a phone, is it? Right? What is this thing? What is this thing? It's a computer right? It's a very powerful computer. It, one of the things it can do is to make phone calls, but it can do a thousand other things. So it seems silly to call it a phone, right? Because it does many, many things of which making phone calls is only one. So, uh, you know, I prefer to call it, you know, my pocket computer. And, uh, you know, when I think of the first computer that I worked on uh, back in the, uh, in the late 1960s, um, it filled a room, you know, uh, that require and it had four or five people to run it and it probably wasn't a thousandth of the power of this little device uh, that i can buy it, it, of course only a large corporation could own one it cost millions of dollars and this little thing cost a few hundred dollars and and it fits in my pocket okay so uh, that's kind of the what has happened over the past 50 or 60 years is that as the as our computer computers have got smaller and smaller and smaller physically, they have increased exponentially in power, right? So I couldn't even imagine a thing like this back in those days, uh, let alone the size. You know, there was just nothing, even the size of a room computer that had as much power as this thing does. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at it. So we know what this is now. This is a pocket computer. We call it a phone. Everybody calls it a mobile phone or a cell phone, but it's really a very powerful pocket computer. Uh, it has very few controls on it. So if everybody remembers the days when uh, we had the flip phones, you know, the thing flipped open and had a little screen and had multiple buttons on, or even before that, the manual phones, which had the buttons or even the dial. Uh, this thing has very, very few controls and it has no buttons at all. And that was the brilliant idea that Apple came out with only in 2007. So we've only had this kind of concept of this phone for 13 years now. It feels like forever, but you know, really, 14 years ago, you didn't have one of these phones. If you had a phone, it was a flip phone. If you even had a mobile phone, not everybody had a mobile phone. Today, probably, you know, 95% of people have one of these devices everywhere on the planet. <clears throat> so that's the one thing that kind of unites the whole of humanity is that, you know, people are using Google phones, Android phones in India, in China, in South America, in Africa, in Europe, in Russia, they're all using this. Uh, so although Apple really was the first, today Android has, I don't know, 60% of the market, 70% of the market, simply because by giving it away, Google made sure that many manufacturers would produce phones. And that's why you can get them from in, in a range of prices. You know, you, it's like your motor car. You can buy a cheaper one, you can buy a Ford, or you can buy a Ferrari. You can buy a, a Chevy, or you can buy a Mercedes. You, you decide what you want. Uh, whereas with Apple, there's only one, and so apples are wonderful machines, but they're very, very expensive because you can only get it from one place. So what we have here is, first of all, <clears throat> we see that um, it has one large button on the front, and in fact, uh, those buttons, even that button is now starting to go away with the latest phones. So it doesn't even have this, this main button down here. Uh, the button is actually on the screen, so they can make the screen. They, they saw this little bit of extra real estate. You see the silver area at the bottom? And they said, wait a minute, we can use that too. So they extended the screen all the way down to the bottom, so that 
that home button, which we're going to talk about in a moment, is now on the screen, which is a little tricky because you've got to be able to find it, right? You can't see it when it's, when it's not lit up. <clears throat> uh, we have usually one, one switch or one button on the side, and that it's usually on the right-hand side. That's the power button, right? So if you hold that button down for about five seconds, it will either turn the phone off if it's already on, or it'll turn it on if it's off. Okay, so we've been over this before. I've said my advice is never turn your phone off. It's not worth it. At night, just plug it in next to your bed and let it charge up. Uh, there is no need mostly to turn the phone off unless, you know, unless you're not unless you're going to not be near a battery for a long time. You don't want the battery to run down and you have no access to 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 a power bar, a power cable. Or, or electrical supply, then turn the phone off. Otherwise, leave it on. Usually on the right, then you have, and the same is on the tablets. It's pretty much the same on the tablet. There are two, two buttons on, on my phone on the left. Some have one button, and you can push it at the top or at the bottom, like a rocker switch. And that's the volume buttons, to make your volume louder or softer. At the bottom, we have some holes for most of the phones, and the same applies on the tablets. So who knows what this little rectangular hole is, the one in the middle? For charging. That's right. That's the electrical power, right? But it's actually cleverer than that because that, that, that little rectangular box is called a USB, a universal service bus. Never mind about the service bus. The fact is it's universal. So anything that you plug into this phone would go in there, right? So you could, um, you know, I, I have these uh, fancy headphones right, which plug into my computer. But all I need is a, is a connection that's small enough and I could connect that, that, those big earphones via the USB, the standard USB interface. It's a very clever idea. Who knows what the round hole is for? Earphones. Say again? Earphones. That's right, so here they are. Here's my earphone, right? I plug it in there and now I can have conversations on the phone uh, without everybody hearing, uh, you know, what the other side is saying. Well, I can listen to music when I'm in a room with somebody else, watch a movie, not disturb people. Okay, uh, what's this little mm, kind of set of tiny little holes right next to it? Mic. That's the, that's the microphone and the, little, uh, yeah, and the sound, bit. right? So your sound is coming out mm -hmm. there. The microphone is actually, that's really where the sound is coming out. The microphone is actually a very tiny little hole over on the other side that you can barely see, but that's, that doesn't matter. So that's the sound part of it. Okay. Then, of course, we have the big fat button on, big fat thing on the back. What's that? What's oh. thing over here? That's the camera. camera. That's the camera, right? Camera. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea that Apple came up with, is they put a camera in a phone. I remember when that came out, my first thought is, what the heck do I need a camera in my phone for? You know, that's like having a stove in your car. It didn't seem to make a lot of sense. But mm -hmm. uh, that, of course, has been one of the most successful features of the phones because everybody now likes to take pictures of themselves and, and whatever they're doing. But there was an extra idea that they came up with, and that made me even more confused when it first came out because that's the camera, and I can aim it outwards and take pictures of you or of the mountains or the trees or whatever of my family. But if you turn the phone around and look at the front, you'll see that there's another little hole right at the top there. And that's also camera, it's a very small one, right? And what, that was the camera facing the other way, facing towards you. And again, one oh, thought, well, why do we need two cameras? And of course oh, that introduced yeah. the famous new word selfie. in the English language, which was? Selfie, selfie, selfie. Selfie, right. We never had the word selfie before 2007. <laughs> That's a new word and it's now in the dictionary. And that is a, that you can turn the camera to face that way or to face, you can use either camera, not at the same time. You can either be taken that way or this way. And if you use a selfie, then it takes pictures of you. And that's what most people spend their lives doing today. If you're under about 30, you spend half your life taking pictures of yourself. If you and your friends and whatever you're doing and so on, they have, they're taking pictures all the time. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, those, are, those are really the only controls on this device. Now, where are the rest of the controls? How does this thing work? Okay, and so that was the, 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 the primary difference here was that <clears throat> when we turn the phone on, so if the phone is actually running to notice that the screen had gone dark, why did my screen go dark? 
It's hmm. gone dark again. Why is it doing that? You're Save power. It's saving the battery, right? And of course, okay. of course, you know, the good news is these phones are tiny. The bad news is, but they're so small they can't have a very big battery in them. There's no place. You know, you you can't lug a okay. a car battery along with you on your shoulder to keep your phone running. So it's got a little battery inside, and the the amount of time the battery lasts is actually amazing today because the newer versions of this will go a whole day. You know. Of, of making phone calls, taking photographs, watching movies, whatever, and, and the battery will last probably around about a whole day. My one is an older one now. It probably lasts about five hours still, which is, which is plenty, good enough for most purposes. So the reason that that happens is because this, this beautiful color screen uh, takes a lot of battery, uses up a lot of electricity, it mm -hmm. turns it off. And the time that it stays on, you can change. And I'm going to show you that in a few seconds. So there are many things on this device that you can control the way it operates. You can make this phone do and look exactly the way you want, right? So we can change that time. You can see mine set at about five or 10 seconds. It's quite quick, but you could make it 30 seconds or a minute or whatever. Obviously, that is going to be more wasteful of the battery. So the, the other ingenious part of it, of, of where are all the main controls on this phone? <clears> home <throat> key. They are actually on the home screen, right? Or on the screen. So the idea is that this screen is the that's the secret source, the idea of the screen. And these screens are called, who remembers what the screen is called, what kind of screen it is? Who remembers? It's called a touch screen, right? So that was a unique idea, right? To have um, a touch screen, a screen that would allow you to um, um, uh, touch, actually touch the, touch the screen. I'm just getting it set up here. There we go. Okay, so that you can touch the screen and the screen would know where your finger is. That's an amazing thing if you think about it. So this little screen knows that my finger is up there or it's down here or it's in the middle, not when it's a, a long way away, when it's within about a quarter of an inch or half an inch away, it can sense the electrical activity in your finger. So we all have a tiny amount of electrical activity from our nerves. And that thing behind that piece of glass is electronics which can sense that. And so you think, well, so what? Why does this thing need to know where my finger is? And that was a brilliant idea. They came up with these little pictures. And each little picture does something. What do we call those little pictures? Icons. Icons apps. Or, or apps. apps. Icon is the correct name but most people now call it an app because it's an application program and so the idea that came up before the, the the touch screen was that you had complicated programs like you used to have in pc you really needed experts like me to explain to you how to work the darn thing right this was the new idea to say instead of having one program uh, somebody uh, could you mute your 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 your, your uh, microphone please i'm hearing some background noise thank you um in the old days, you had very complicated software that could do all kinds of things, but the bad news was it was complicated, right? And you required, you know, people like me to explain it to you. Well, that source of income went away from me as soon as these things came out, because the idea was to have a series of pictures or buttons, and each one of them does only one thing, right? So the one that says calendar doesn't tell me the time or send email. So if it says it's the calendar, that's the one down on the bottom with the date on. And if I press that, I'll see my day timer, right? The calendar pops up and it shows me all my appointments for, for today or this week or this month or whatever I want. And then I can open each end point. You can see all the appointments. If I click on the individual appointment, uh, it opens up and it shows me all the technical details. So this one says Benson security wrap up, which was the appointment I had on Monday when we, we finished the security class. <clears throat> and today's one will say Benson Android wrap up, right? So uh, very simple, very elegant. And that the reason I'm going over all of this again is that when you install new software on your phone, so that's the, the, the next thing is that the phone comes with a certain amount of software, the calendar, the email, the actual phone, of course, the one down at the bottom left-hand corner, which looks like a, an old telephone. Uh, when you touch that, then the phone will pop up and it will allow me to give me the, the, the regular numbers and I can dial the numbers by pressing on the screen, okay? 
<clears throat> However, the brilliant idea was that you can have many, many, many more apps than just the ones that Google provides us. And so uh, it didn't take companies very long to realize that they could supply you with free apps. Most of the apps are free and they would allow you to communicate directly with the company, right? So just think about in the old days, you know, uh, when, when Amazon first came out, it was really not easy to communicate with them. Now I can do it from my phone when I have an app that says, and, uh, that, that, that says Amazon. And when I press that, it connects me directly to Amazon. So it's like having a, a direct line to Kroger and Amazon and the Social Security Administration and your bank and so on. They're all providing those kind of apps. Okay? So we have, a, we have a limited amount of real estate on here. You can see that. It's not that big. Um, not very big. Uh, probably you get, I don't know, 20 apps or something, which for most people is enough. But for, you know, there are so many of these apps out there now that you need to optimize the space. So the first thing is that there's not just one screen. This is kind of like a newspaper. So if you just touch the screen and you flip it over to the left like that, it takes you to a new page. And you can see I've got a whole lot more apps there and you can do it one more time. Some, I think some versions have got four. Uh, but actually mine's got four. Yeah, there's a fourth one. But it, there's, some have got five, some have got six pages, but more than you possibly need, right? So that's number one thing you can do. The other thing you can do to save space is if you see it over here, I've got an icon that says Google. If you can see it, it says Google, that one right there. And you'll notice that it's got several little icons inside. Some little, some, notice it's got, it's got like one little square and then it's got four little ones inside. And that is, you can group a whole lot of, apps together so those are all my google apps instead of having i've got about eight of them as you'll see in a second instead of taking up eight places on my screen it's only taking up one it's like a file folder right instead of keeping all the pieces of paper on my desk i put them in a single filer single folder and i call it google and you can see that now if i if i touch that icon a whole lot of a whole lot of other icons open up. In fact, you can see there's nine of them, right? So uh, that's Gmail and, 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 uh, uh, and, and the Play Store and a whole bunch of other apps. I can put as many as I like in there. How do we do that? Very simply. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take, let's say you've got three, let's say you've got a series of games. You've got three different games that you like to play. Just choose any one of them and drag it on top of, a, of, of another one. So let's say you've got games A, B, and C. Take game B and just drag the icon on top of A. It'll turn it into a little folder like that with A and B. And then you can take C and drag it in there. So the question then I asked here, how much do you guys remember? How do I drag the icons? How do I move those icons around? In other words, what I'm saying is you can actually rearrange. I've rearranged this screen to be exactly the way I want. I've got the apps, the apps and the icons precisely where I want them. I know exactly where they are. How do I do that? Who remembers? Um, Some of you are just touching them because if you just touch the icon, then it'll open the app and it'll do whatever. It, so if I just touch the app that says, that's the calendar at the bottom there, uh, well, my calendar will open. But let's say that that's not what I want to do. I actually want to move that calendar app. So there's my calendar app. And let's say I wanted to move it up there. Well, very simple. All you do, and this is true of all your Google phones, hold the icon down for a few seconds. So if you put your mm -hmm. finger on it and hold it down, you'll see that a little, a little menu opens up. Can you see a little menu? A little menu opens up and it says, uh, oops, sorry. Hang on. Being bulky today. Come on. There's a little menu. You see the little menu that opened up? I wasn't pressing right. I don't see the little it. little menu see says, it. uh, it's got three things. It says one, the first one says select multiple, forget about that. Then there's uninstall and remove, right? So if I press uninstall, the app is gone forever. Uh, somebody please, my, somebody please mute your microphone. Thank you very much. Um, I can either choose uninstall, 
which will take it off the computer completely, or the little X I can press remove, just removes that icon. If you don't want the icon, but it will still be using up space in your computer, either one. But once that little menu comes up, I can now keep my finger on that app and it will move. I'm able to make it move. And you'll see that there, if, you, if you can see what's happening in my finger, I'm moving the app up there. See that app? I moved it to the top right hand corner there just by holding it down and dragging it with my finger. As soon as you let it go, it's in the new position and you can see my app that says Earthlink, that one over there, has now moved to the, to the top. So you can arrange these apps any way you like. Uh, does anybody want to hazard a guess at what that bottom row is? Why is that bottom row sort of slightly different to all the others? On some versions of Android, the bottom row has actually got a, a different background color. It's not the case on my one, because I've got a picture as a background, so the picture uses the whole thing, but some of you may have a different color. What's specific about those on the bottom row? Who remembers? Okay, those apps on the bottom row are your most used apps, the ones that you use a lot. And you'll notice that they are different to all the other apps. If I move this, the screen across, I move it across. You'll see that as that screen moves to the next page, the ones at the bottom stay, they don't move. So they're always there. And that's where I put my phone, because I use that a lot, uh, the camera, my voicemail, and my uh, calendar and name and address list are all on the bottom row because I use them a lot. But you can put it whatever you like down there, okay? So that, that's one way that we can actually modify it. Now, I wanna show you oh, uh, one more thing. Right, on the bottom, next to the uh, home screen. So why is that, why is the large button, the only button that we've got called the home screen? What is that, why is it called the home screen? Anybody? Exactly. Why is it called the home screen? What does it do? If I press this button down here. Takes you back to the home. It, but what is home? Does it take you back to your apartment? If you're out of town, you're outside in the street and you press that button, do you land up back in your bedroom? No, of course not, right? It takes you back to the first screen, the very, very first screen. So whatever you were doing, you can never get lost on your phone because if you press the home screen, it will always take you back to that, that particular screen. But you'll notice if I put my finger there, next, if I just touch next, next to the home screen on the left or the right, you'll see two little new icons light up. Can you see them? There's this one and there's this one. They are sort of virtual buttons. They aren't real buttons and, and the home screen on the newer phones has become like that too. So you'll see that there's two of them. This one looks like a sort of an arrow with a, a curly arrow. If you press that, whatever you're doing now will take you back to the previous app, the one that you just used before. So if you did your email and then you made a phone call, the phone would be the last app you used. If you press the little button, it'll take you back to your email, which is very useful. The other one, this one on the left, uh, which looks like sort of two rectangles, that's a very useful one. That I use all the time. If you press it, it shows you all the apps that you've got running, right? So let's say I wanted, you can see here, it's got a list of apps, like a stack of apps. And right at the top is my calendar. So if I press calendar now, you can see it. If I touch calendar, it just takes me straight back to my calendar. So it's kind of like you've got all your pieces of paper on your desk and you can go to any one of them. You don't have to you know, close all the apps out and come back. So when you've been doing something on your phone, like going to Amazon or going to CNN or whatever, you don't have to close that app out multiple apps can stay open at the same time and you can get back to any one of them at any instant you like. So that's a very useful thing to know. Okay, we spoke about apps. Here, is, uh, here are some examples of other apps. So these are not the standard apps that you get for the phone. And here they are, there's some little buttons. So there's Amazon, Kindle, Delta, Bank of America, Facebook, Lyft, and the Google Play Store. 
right? The, the, these are just a few of the many thousands of apps that are out there, most of which are available to you for free. So Amazon, you press this button, it opens up your browser, takes you to Amazon, and you can shop till you drop, right? Uh, Kindle, very, very useful thing. Kindle is the app that works both on the phone and on the tablet and allows you to read electronic books. So on my Kindle, uh, I've got you know dozens of books. And if and when we can go on vacation again one of these days, please God, you know, instead of carrying a stack of books to read on the beach, I take them either on my phone or on my tablet, mostly on the tablet because the phone is a little bit small uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to read easily. This one here, uh, this is Delta. If I click on that button, it instantly connects me with Delta Airlines. In the days when I used to fly a lot, none of us are flying much anymore. There's also exactly the same one with Southwest and American or whichever airline you prefer. And that allows you to do almost anything that you could do in the old days on a phone with uh, where you needed to call them to make a reservation, check what time a flight is coming in, find out what flights there are if you wanted to go to New York, what flights are there on New York for, you know, independent. Independence Day weekend or whatever you like, you, all of that would be in there. But not only do these apps now allow me to connect to, to the company, to say to, to, to Delta, it allows them to connect to me as well. So when I check in at Delta, or Southwest in fact, but Delta was the first one to do it, I get a text if the flight is gonna be late. So I don't have to go sit at the gate for two hours. I'll send me a text saying the flight's been delayed and I can either stay at home and come a little later or I can go sit in the restaurant and have coffee. Um, also, when they load, my, when they load my, my bag on the plane or they unload it on the other side, I get a text that says your bag's been loaded. I know they haven't lost my bag. And when I get on the other side, we've unloaded your bag. I know that my bag is there. I'm not going to have to stand away 45 minutes, uh, you know, waiting eternally for a bag that doesn't come. Bank of America here, all the other banks are the same. SunTrust, all of them have got their app which allows you to do anything that you could do uh, in person with a bank, including depositing checks, which is an amazing thing. There's only one thing you can do with the banks, of course, and that's get cash, because they, they haven't yet figured out how to have a little slot on the phone, you know, where $10 and $20 bills could come out. But that maybe is in the next version of Android, I don't know. <laughs> okay, F for Facebook. Uh, I recommend strongly that uh, seniors stay off Facebook. It's, 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 a, it's become a real cesspool. It's very dangerous. Uh, there are lots of people out there, you know, trying to contact us through Facebook for the obvious reason that they want to get access to your assets. And I talk about that in the security course. Lyft and Uber, you press the button, you type in an address of where you want to go, and the Lyft or the Uber driver comes and takes you. You can either take you to Benson or take you to Perimeter or wherever you want to go. This one, with this little triangle with the four different colors on, red, yellow, green, and blue, all of Google's apps have those four colors. The only difference is they change the shape. So this one is the, um, the, the app that will take you to the Google Play Store. And there it's mentioned over there. And the Google Play Store is the biggest store you've ever seen in your life. And unlike any store you've ever seen since any of us were, were, were kids, the store mostly is free. Imagine being able to go to Perimeter Mall and you go to any store you like and the shoes are free and the drinks are free and the lunches are free and the smartphones are free at the Apple store. That would be wonderful. Well, it isn't the case in the real world, but it is in the case of the cyber world and the online world. And so when you click on this icon, <clears throat> the Play Store will open. Now they've got tens of thousands of apps. If you want to find a particular app, you'll never find it by trying to scroll through. There are just too many of them. So there's a little scroll bar, there's a little, excuse me, a little um, query bar. You usually see it with a little magnifying glass next to it. You type in the name of the app you want and it'll find it for you instantly. So if you wanted the Delta app, this one here, all you'd type into the search bar would be D-L-T-A, Delta, and bingo, there it would be, you click on the button and it installs it, takes a minute or two, there's nothing for us to do, and now the app works. Some of them you have to register some stuff with it, for example, uh, if you downloaded, say, Bank of America, you would need to tell it, you know, who you are, what your bank account number is, and you will then set up a PIN or a, or a password and so forth, and then you can do everything using that app. But there are literally thousands and thousands of wonderful apps out there. Here you see uh, <clears throat> a very important icon, 
Again, notice the four colors, red, yellow, green, and blue, same as with the triangle we just saw, except now they're in a circle. Again, this is a Google piece of software, and this is the browser called Chrome, right? And you can, there are many browsers out there. They're like Chevys and Fords. They all do exactly the same thing. Uh, I, I like the Chrome. It's, it's pretty simple to use. There's nothing much to it. But this button then allows you to go to the internet. So once you press on this button, you can type in your address to the internet and you can see millions and millions and millions of websites out there ranging from CNN and and, and Fox News and the New York Times and the BBC in England or the Russian newspapers in English from Moscow or any other website, Amazon, <clears throat> Social Security Administration, your doctor's office, uh, the, the, social, the, uh, the VA, all of every, every company, every organization pretty much on the planet now has uh, a place on the internet. And this is the, this is the way you get there. The, 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 this little round button here is really the motor car that takes you or the bus that takes you to anywhere on the internet. So it uh, doesn't matter how old we are now or how, you know, whether we can travel or not, we can't travel anymore, but we can still go to any part of the planet. You can go and see where you like or see what's going on in the other country. Anyways, uh, will you, everybody please mute your microphone. I'm hearing background noise from somebody. Thank you. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I've spoken about all of this. We know how to type text. We're, um, be, you know, the, 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 um, the type, typing text on, 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 uh, on the keyboard that you get, uh, this virtual keyboard here, which comes up. Now, you know, putting numbers in to, to type out, um, the type of phone numbers, okay, because they're nice and big and they're far apart. But the letters of the alphabet, when you want to type an email or something, are close together. And it tends to be that when we press the button, our finger, use, certainly I do, my finger, your finger will rotate just a little bit. And this thing is so sensitive, it'll very often get the wrong letter, get the one next to it. So what I recommend is, if you have fat fingers like I do, get yourself a pen like this. This is an ordinary ballpoint pen, right? They have many places, you know, give them away for free. Uh, this one, I think I got for free from some organization. But the important thing is you'll see it's got a little rubber tip on the end, right? It's kind of uh, like a little round piece of rubber and it, you can press it gently. So now this is great for pressing the buttons. Instead of using your finger, uh, it's really great for pressing the buttons. It works terrific. Uh, and it never makes a mistake. So when you hit an A, you're going to get an A. When you hit an L, you're not going to get the M, which is next to the L going to get the iron. So I suggest for most people, this is a pretty useful thing to get. Let's say you can get them for free or you can get them at you know places like Kroger. They cost a dollar or two. They're not, they're not expensive. Uh, okay. Let's move on to some. Uh, okay. So uh, <clears throat> one of the things we, we spoke about last time is that uh, you know, you can do a lot of very impressive things with your phone, providing you know which, all you have to know is which icon to press. But uh, what came out a few years ago is uh, Google decided that pressing buttons is too slow now. And so now we can do just about anything on our phone with our voice. So if you are at the home screen, now remember this, this only works at the home screen. Don't work anywhere else. Don't ask me why that is, but don't work anywhere else. If you say the magic words and here they are on the screen, okay, I'm going to put my phone behind my back. Okay, Google, right? In fact, he went, he actually heard it behind my back. <laughs> I was hoping you not to hear it, right? So uh, if you say those magic words, okay, Google, you can now do, again, he heard me say that. Notice, even though I said it in the middle of a sentence, she or he, Google heard me say that, and a little message pops up says, "Hi, can I? How can I help?" And now you can do anything you like that you would normally do with your fingers. You can do with your mouth, which is fantastic. So, for example, set an alarm for 6:30 a.m. on Wednesday. Right? Uh, you don't even have to say which Wednesday. It will assume it's the next Wednesday. But you could also say, "Set an alarm for 6:30 a.m. on Wednesday, June the 14th, or whatever, or July the 7th." 
and it will set the alarm for that day, right? Uh, call Bob Johnson mobile. So if you just said call Bob Johnson, it will look for Bob Johnson in your name and address list, in your contacts list. If he has one, one phone number, a mobile number, it'll call that number. Or if he has only one number, his home number, it'll call that number. If he has more than one number, it'll ask, say to you, do you want me to call Bob Smith's, Bob Johnson's mobile number or his home number, right? But yeah, I actually said call Bob Johnson mobile and it'll find Bob Johnson in my contact list and it'll make a call. I can say send an email to Wendy Smith. It knows what the email is. I then dictate the email, dear Wendy, hope to see you next week, uh, da, 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 have a nice day, bye. And then you say send, and the email will go off. So really amazing, useful stuff. You can ask general questions. So if you wanna know something, you can say, uh, you know, what was the hottest temperature ever recorded in the USA? Let's do that. Okay, Google. What was the hottest temperature ever recorded in the USA? So 134 degrees, okay, uh, from in Death Valley. So now they'll show me a link. Uh, you see the blue, the blue dot. So the, whenever you see blue text like that, you see where it says Death Valley hosts the hottest temperature. That's that's a link. And if I touch that, it will open up a whole article or some information about it. So there's the article. The hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth, 134, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also say, uh, okay, Google, who won the World Series in 1962? Okay, the Yankees won the, won the World Series in 62. So you now have access to all the facts on the planet, right? Imagine, remember how much work we had to do when we were in high school or college to write a paper, go into the library, get books out, bring them home, find what you want. This will do it for you instantaneously, okay? <clears throat> so anything you wanna do with, that you can do with your finger, you can do with your voice here. Look at this one, play the top song from 1965. Let's try that. Okay, Google, play the top song from 1965. <laughs> uh, let's see. So now it's busy opening up. It's going to play music. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. And now you can choose the song, and you know you that they, they, they they've got an ad. I'm going to let's see what the songs were. Some rock song from 1965, okay? And that's all it took. So it really is an amazing device now. So this device now can do literally anything you want. You know, it, 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 it even knows things like, you know, mathematical stuff. How many seconds are there in a century? If you ever wanted to know that, you try it out yourself, right? Um, We know how to use the browser. So here's Chrome, right? The Chrome browser. Uh, it, it sort of looks a little complicated. It's kind of like an, you know, when you go into the, the cockpit of a plane and you know Delta airplane or something, you see all those knobs and dials and buttons and so on. But once you know what it is, it's relatively straightforward. So here it is. Uh, it's got a few standard buttons at the top. So first of all, you'll see that you've got these like little tabs. They look like the tabs on a file folder. Can you see that? And that means each, each tab is a different site. You can go to as many sites as you like and you keep them all open. You don't have to close out amazon.com. You can stay connected to it all the time. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't make your computer or your phone slower. Just leave it open. So now this, you see that this tab over here, if you can look where my cursor is, says CNN, right? I like watching the news on CNN. So I just keep it open all the time. And if I now, at, Right here on the main screen, I'm at Amazon. See there, Amazon. But if I wanted to get back to CNN, all I gotta do is touch 
literally with my finger where it says CNN and it will open CNN. I can go back to, you know, can be doing that. Uh, basically got some buttons at the top, which are quite standard. Here's the home button, which takes you not to the home screen on your, uh, on your phone, but it takes you to whatever is your home, your first screen that you were on the browser, which in this case is Amazon. You'll see two arrows here, a left arrow and a right arrow. If you click the left arrow, it takes you back one screen. So if you, if you first look to choose, and now you're looking at, 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 at you know, computers, you're on the computer one, if you press this, the, the back arrow, it'll take you back to the, 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 the page on Amazon where you were looking at the, at the shoes or whatever you're doing before. The, the, the right arrow is the opposite way around, right? So if I looked at shoes and then computers, and then I go back to uh, shoes, now if I press the right arrow, it'll take me forward to looking at computers, okay? Um, <clears throat> this, little, this little strange thing over there that looks like sort of a, a square leaning over, that really is a new tab. So let's say I want to keep these tabs open. I like going to Amazon. I like watching CNN. Don't have to close them out. Click, just click here or touch with your finger on the new tab and it'll open a new blank page and you can go somewhere else. So now you can have three open or four or five or 10. It doesn't really matter at all, okay? So this, this works better, obviously, on a tablet where you've got more space. The phone is a little cramped to be doing that only because it's small, but it works great uh, on your tablet, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, when, when, the, uh, when the tablets first came out, when the Android tablets came out, they didn't have phones in them. A, a, a tablet was not meant to be a phone. So, the, 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 the phone and the, this phone and the tablet do exactly the same things, but there was one thing that the tablet didn't do, and that was to be a telephone. And I think the reason they didn't do that is because they couldn't see us sort of walking like with your tablet on your shoulder, like a boom box next to your ear, trying to make a phone call. You know, it's, it's this big, right? It's, it's, this, is, this is fine to be making phone calls, but we didn't want something that big. But then the smart software guy said, no, no, we're gonna get around that. We're gonna figure out how to do phone calls without actually having a phone. And so um, there are a whole lot of ways that we can do this. Um, one of them is called Google Hangouts. So Google provides us with a piece of software. One of its free software is Hangouts. If you don't have Hangouts on your phone or on your, on your tablet, just go to the Play Store, type in Hangouts, and it'll install it for you. And Hangouts allows you to do all the things that you can do on a phone. You can make phone calls, you can text, you can even do video calls like we're doing here. So you can do that with Hangouts. There are several other products that will do it as well. There's Skype and then there's WhatsApp and several others. They all do more or less the same thing. So basically you can text, you can send instant messages to somebody else, or you can have this kind of conversation that we're having with full, full motion video or just make a phone call. The only thing here is that with Hangouts, you, you, the other person also has to have Hangouts. So Hangouts to Hannah, Hangouts, Skype to Skype, or WhatsApp to WhatsApp. For some reason, nobody yet has figured out how to put them all together so that you know, anybody can call anybody else. But that's not a big deal, because if there's somebody you talk to regularly, uh, whether you have family in New York or something like that, make sure everybody's got the same thing. You've downloaded Skype, or you've downloaded Hangouts, and you can make phone call there we go so yeah when i start this up it shows me all the people that i normally talk to down the left so there's a friend of mine who happens to be eight thousand miles away in south africa if i click to, I, either i need to find him notice there's a that there's a you can start a new conversation here and allow you to type his name in so if this person is on google hangouts they, their name will be recorded there and I don't even have to know their, 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 their phone number or anything. I just type the guy's name. And if there's more than one person with that name, then you may have to look through them. Unfortunately, you know, if you've got a name like John Smith, um, that's going to be a little tricky, but you might say John Smith in Cincinnati, Ohio. And that will reduce it to, you know, far fewer John Smiths than there are, say, in New York or, or the whole of the United States. But as soon as I, you get the name, you click on this, 
and you are now in a position to start. Let's jump ahead. And there, a screen will open up. Uh, the three, there's some buttons up here. This one will allow me to make a video call to this guy. I can just click on the button and make a video call like we're doing now. So you can see and talk to whoever you, is on the other side. There's also an example where there's just a little phone icon. And if you press that, you're just making a phone call and you don't have to turn on your video. So people have said to me, well, I'm scared of this thing because, you know, I don't want people to see me. Uh, you know, before I put on my makeup, the ladies say, or the guys say, you know, I haven't shaved yet this morning. Well, then you don't have to turn on your camera. So here's Skype, the big S, exactly the same thing. Where do we get Skype? From the Google Play Store. It's, uh, it comes from Microsoft. My, Microsoft bought the company. And here we can see, here's the video call. And here is a regular phone call. Just got the little phone icon or the video icon and you're in full control, and I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that now. You can read up on this stuff yourself. The last thing I wanna talk about is the camera, right? Which uh, most of us probably know how to use, but there are lots of useful tricks in there. So first of all, to use the camera, and I know some people have asked me about this, is you know, how do you do that? So in the bottom right-hand corner, second, second icon over there, uh, this one, this icon right over here is the camera. It actually says camera underneath it. And if I take press on that, my camera opens up, right? And that's the camera that's facing that way. All I now have to do to take a, a picture is you'll see the little white button at the bottom, right? The big white button. If I press the big white button, hold the camera steady, it will take a picture. Okay, that's it. Uh, you can instantly see the picture. It will be, so if I take a, if I take a picture now, say of my screen, right next to the button now, next to the white button, right next to it, can you see there's a, a small little colored button? And that colored button has got the picture in. So if I touch that button, there's the picture I just took, right? And that shows you the last picture you took or you can see all the pictures in your gallery just by scrolling through. Notice like this, I'm scrolling through and I can see all the pictures that I've taken in the last however long and keep those pictures forever, okay? Uh, any picture you can delete, I don't want that picture anymore. You'll see there's a series of, it's hard, not, not that easy to read, right at the bottom, there's a series of little icons that come up and in the far right hand, far right hand side is a little trash can. You see the little trash can and it says delete next to it, right over there, over here. And so if I press delete, it says to me, do you want to delete it? It always gives me a chance. I say delete and that icon uh, is gone. So another thing you'll notice, people say to me, well, my phone's too slow. I'm running out of space and so on. And uh, AT&T or Verizon wants me to buy a new phone for $600. You mostly don't need to spend the money to get a new phone. Mostly. For most of us, our phone is clogged up with photographs. Because photos take up quite a bit of space and videos take up even more space. All you need to do from time to time is go look through your photographs and delete the junk. You know, I find I've got three pictures of the same kid, right? Delete two of them. I've got videos of things that happened four years ago that I haven't even looked at lately. Just delete them, clean them out. So a little bit of time spent cleaning out your phone, getting rid of uh, photos and videos will mostly resolve your problem. Very few of us are ever going to actually fill this phone up. Very few with real stuff. You'll find that you've got, you know, just junk from five years ago, three years ago, 10 copies of the same photo that you took of your grandchildren or whatever. Just pare them down, get rid of them, delete them. And then the other thing to know about it, about your, uh, about your phone, about the camera, you'll see the red button next to the white button. Everybody see the little red button there? Who knows what the red button is? The videos. That's right. If you press that button, all you have to do is hold your, your camera steady, press the red button, and it'll start taking a video. And you can move the video around. 
you can show different people if you're at a wedding or a party or a gathering we're not doing a lot of that much much of that anymore but that little red button right there allows you to to take videos and of course that's the big thing today that all the kids are doing you know their websites like TikTok, and all they do the kids every kid is doing it right my grandchildren who bored at home they're all making videos and putting them on TikTok and then showing them to their friends of themselves dancing or cat videos you know there are thousands of cat cute cat videos you can see kitties playing with their toys and all that kind of junk this has become the big thing today uh is to uh to to make a video and then post it on many of these sites these websites like instagram and TikTok. that's what they're there for exclusively to make and post videos uh, i think i read somewhere the other day that every hour every hour of the day 24 hours a day uh, about 10 million hours of videos are, are put up on the internet. So each day, 10 million hours are, put, are being put up because 100 million people are each putting up a, uh, a video of 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But if 100 million people do it, you get these millions and millions, billions of hours of, of, of video that are out there. Right? I don't do a lot of it, but you know, maybe you will do that. Uh, one more thing about the camera. Oh, uh, I want to tell you just really two things about the camera before we end. So if I've got my main camera like this, uh, that camera is, is facing, it, it, this is the camera that's facing outward. So right now, that's why you can see me on the camera, right? Uh, because uh, it's facing, it's the backward facing camera facing towards me. How do we turn the camera around to get the selfie, right? Well, if you look, it's unfortunately it's not easy to see because it's, it's white. I don't know why they didn't make these little icons black that you could see them. So it's white. But in the top left hand corner right there, you'll see a teeny little icon that looks like a camera with an arrow going around. It's, it's quite hard to see. And it's right over there. See that? It's in the top left hand corner. If you touch that, you just touch it with your finger. Now my camera swung around and you can see that the camera now is showing a picture of, this, of my computer screen because it's, it's the other camera facing. When I look at it, I see a picture of myself. So that's the one thing that everybody should know about. And now, same thing again, actually you can see it a little more clearly now, right? Now they put a black bar there. Can you see that? So it's white on black, which is eerie to read, right? So if you see that, if I touch that now again, it will swing the camera around and it'll flip back to the outward camera. So just, it's a, it's a toggle switch. If you touch it when it's, when you've got the front facing camera working, it'll turn it to the back facing camera and vice versa. Very, very simple. Here's a very useful thing you can do with your Android camera. I'm not gonna go into the details. If you want more details, just look in the notes here. But I've, I've used this on occasion and you can take a panoramic photograph. I think this is the most amazing technology. So here's a picture, I was in Amsterdam, the city of Amsterdam. And anybody who's been in Amsterdam in Holland will know that the buildings are very narrow right? They're very, very narrow, sort of tall buildings. They're four and five and six stories. Many of them are 200, 300 years old, but very narrow. And they all jam together. There's no space between them. So I wanted to take a picture of this as well as here's one of the canals. They have canals in there and a whole lot of boats on the canal. Something was going on. I don't remember what it was, some party or something. So basically a panoramic picture is you turn on the panoramic, you press the panoramic button, right? And you you just take multiple pictures, click, 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 click. It's almost like taking a video. Then when you're done, this fantastic software will take all those pictures and knit them together, exactly matching where the one picture ends and the other one starts and give you a wide angle picture. So this picture here from this side on the left to that side on the right is, I don't know, probably 500 yards. It's, it was big. There was a lot of space here. Right. And in fact, my, my panoramic picture is actually bigger than that. I couldn't fit the whole thing on the screen. Right. So I'm just showing you the panoramic that I could see. And so you could take a picture of, you know, the entire White House or, uh, you know, the mountain with the president's on. You, you, you could take multiple pictures like that, multiple single shots, not a video, single shots. And then this fantastic software knits them together. You can't see you can't see the joins at all. But in fact, this is probably 10 or 15 shots, right? Of individual shots, which are put together. So if you, for example, you have a big family like I do, um, at a wedding, you, if you look behind me, you probably can see where I'm pointing. 
Um, there's a photograph there, a wedding photograph. We've got a lot of, lot, lot in the family, a lot of grandchildren, a lot of kids and so on. The way you take a photo like that is you take a panoramic picture where it may be not easy to take it, to take a single shot. So very useful thing. Not many people use it at all, right? Okay. How do you get panoramic? Do you click on, there's a uh, button you click on for panoramic? Uh, yes, exactly. So uh, now when, when, let's see here. Um, I've got to remind myself. Uh, it's one of the buttons. Uh, oh, sorry, before I answer that question, another thing is useful too. If you look at a picture, let's say I look at, uh, I look at this photograph here, right? I look at a photo like that. And it's hard to see, maybe it's, just, it's quite small. All we have to do, another most useful gesture you can do with your fingers is just open it up like that and the picture will get bigger, right? Or smaller, right? So another trick I, I mentioned in the class is, I don't know if any of you take medication, but I do. And I don't know about you guys, but I can never read the label on that, on that medication, on that, you know, on that little cylinder. It's, it's, it's written in the tiniest, tiniest print. Well, all you do is turn your camera on it either take a picture or just focus your camera on, on, your, on your pill bottle and then do this and it will make it bigger and you can read it, very, read it really easily. Um, I actually, uh, I'm trying to think, remember where the panoramic is. One of the buttons. And there are all kinds of other adjustments you've got in the little white things on the screen. You can change skin tones. You can make them lighter or darker. Uh, you can have automatic flash on. You can turn the flash on. You can turn the flash off. Uh, and one of them somewhere in there is the panoramic. And I don't remember. It's, uh, it's the one that looks like a, looks like a tic-tac-toe thing. That's the, one. That's the one. Looks like a Rubik's Cube, right. That's yeah. It. When you fix that, it, it really is. It's a Rubik's Cube. It takes a whole lot of uh -huh. and it glues them together. So that's exactly the one. Simple to use. And like I say, there are all kinds of other settings on it. Uh, there's the auto flash. There is uh, there's, uh, the brightness. So when you just touch, touch it in the middle, a little light will show up like that. I don't know if you can see it. The light shows up there, a little light bulb. And that means you can make it brighter or lighter depending on the room. So if you're in a room which is a little bit darker, you can make it a little lighter. So you can be a real pro with this camera, much more than you could do uh, with, it, with an old style camera. Uh, mm -hmm. Last thing, and then I think we're going to break. Uh, your phone or your tablet is a wonderful thing for music and movies and what have you. Uh, music, for example, there are many sites. Amazon's got music. YouTube's got music. Spotify's got music and, 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 and videos, pretty much any of them. So when I mentioned yeah, Spotify, they were the first sort of company. They got millions of millions of songs of every genre, rock, uh, classical, uh, country and western, bebop, you name it, rap, they've got it all, right? From the latest songs all the way back to, you know, the 40s and the 50s and, 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 and earlier, and you can, much of the much of the music on Spotify. So here's Spotify, right? It's either an app that you can download or you can go to it on the internet. And you can see down the left it shows you radio. If you click on that radio button at the top here, it'll it'll give you ten thousand radio stations. You can probably listen to a radio station in, in Manchester, England, if you want, right? You can actually listen to it in real time while the while the show's going on in in New York or Chicago or Los Angeles or Korea for that matter. And then, you know, recently played, what songs that I play? I like to I like to listen to certain songs over and over and over again. Yeah, I just gotta go recently played. They're the songs are that I played yesterday. I can click on them and bring them up. And then all kinds of different genres, right? I can create playlists, it's got videos, podcasts is for people who are stuck at home now. You see this one called podcast? That's a very, very useful thing. It's a new idea. A podcast is like a broadcast. But what people do is they, 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 they speak some stuff about what they're interested in. They may be about history, it may be about finance, it may be about the news, it may be about politics, whatever, right? There are tens of thousands of podcasts on this. So you click on that, 
almost all of them are free and you'll see all the podcasts. You want to listen to <coughs> some film star, right? She or he had probably got a podcast. You've got people who teach you how to invest your money and how to bake cakes and whatever you like. Politics, as I say, science, medicine. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want to listen to a podcast by experts on, on, on the virus. There are probably a thousand of them. You just click on it. Most of them don't last more than about 10 minutes. Um, and some of them are really, really good. So it's like listening to the world's greatest experts on any subject you like. You want to have somebody who talks about music, about art, about cookery, about making clothes. There's a podcast for that. Go and listen to the podcast. They're all free and you can listen to them 24 hours a day. And then my last point here, uh, Amazon Kindle. I showed you the Kindle app earlier. Here it is. It's a little boy sitting under a tree. You install the Kindle app. And once you've got the Kindle app on your phone or on your tablet, you have access to millions and millions and millions of books. You can either buy them from Amazon. No book, on, electronic book from Amazon costs more than $10. They're all $9.99 or less. Few are more expensive, but very few. Or them, many of them are free, right? The older books, I've got dozens and dozens of books that are free. Um, but you can also, most of the libraries, if you're a member of the, uh, Fulton County Public Library System, they will allow you to take out books free. So you connect to them, you choose the book, it puts it into your Kindle, and then after two weeks it goes away, or however long they allow you to read the book. Uh, so, you know, the, that's, that's the best value in possibly in history. So here's, here's, for example, just part of my library. You know, I've got books on every subject, um, uh, you know, from Treasure Island and Pride and Prejudice, old novels that are still great reads that are free to the latest science books that I had to buy and, you know, technical stuff. Yeah, Android tablets, using the internet for seniors, you know, research when I've done science books and so on. You can have as many as you like. There's no limit on it at all. Okay, I think uh, we're now just beyond 11 o'clock. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop at that point. I know we had a very rapid run today through the entire subject. So I know that, you know, not everybody can possibly listen to all this. And I'm sorry to have to go so quickly, but we've only got the hour. So send me the email, send me your email, or send me an email, and I will send you these, um, these very slides here. Uh, you can send me an email at Jeff, J-E-F-F, -E -F, underscore, not the dash, but the underscore, Calvariski. K-A-L-W-E-R-I-S-K-Y at earthlink.net. Earthlink is one word. Earthlink is a, uh, an email company that's based here in Atlanta. It's near Pyramid Mall. So I like to support local industry. And I've been with, with Earthlink for about 25 years. I was you know, early on into, into email, 30 years perhaps. So send me that email. Just say, send me the slides for Android. And I will respond to you usually within a few hours, but no more than 24 hours. You'll get these exact slides. So everything that's here will be available for you to read at your leisure. Questions, comments, thoughts? Now's your chance. Jeff. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about Google Photos. Uh huh. And if I back all my photos up to the Google Photo, Mm -hmm. Then I could go in and just delete them off my phone, but they'll still be existing. In yes, Google. yes, that's a good point. So what Google did is they created this thing called Google Photo, which is an app which you download or you've already got it. And it allows you to keep your photos up in the cloud. The cloud simply means you're sharing someone else's computer. In this case, the obvious whose computer are you sharing? Google. So they've got, you know, massive computers all over the world thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And in their, good, good, in their goodness, such as they are for any company, they say, you can have a little bit of our, our computers for free and you can store your phones, your, your photographs there and your videos. So Google Photo basically is allows you to move your photos to the cloud, right? And then delete them from the phone. That's right, good point. Mm -hmm. And there are, Jeff. There, are, there, are, excuse me, there are several, not only Google Cloud, you can, you know, Microsoft's got it, Apple's got it. There's just many of these places you can put your photos and get them off your phone. And therefore you don't have to, you know, the, 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 the telcos, AT&T and them, I love them all. 
But whenever you go in there, the first thing they're going to tell you is, well, your phone's overloaded. So either you've got to buy more, spend more money to get more memory, or you've got to buy a new phone, baloney, right? That's like saying because your ashtray is full in the car, you need a new car. No, you don't. Just clean the ashtray out, right? In the, in the days when we had ashtrays in cars, right? Or, or, the, or the radio is broken. Well, it doesn't mean you, you, know, you fix the radio, you don't need a new car. And so um, <clears throat> the, um, you know, the, the, the issue here is get the stuff off your phone and you'll find that, you know, you don't need to spend the hundreds of dollars on a new phone. Sorry, somebody had a question. Uh, I apologize. Uh, yes, uh, this is Myrtle. Uh, the Chrome, the Chrome icon that you say would, would, would be my browser, mm -hmm. it doesn't go, it, do, it, it doesn't go. I know the brand, but it's giving me an error message that says, Access to playback two at aka maze.net was denied. You I don't have authorization to view this page. I don't know what, what that is, right? Uh, okay. I have no idea what that means. It, it's not that it doesn't work, it has to work. That button, mm -hmm. if you press that button, all it is is the mm -hmm. browser, there's nothing to it. I, 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 it's it, the it's browser. Just not so taking me there. It doesn't actually do anything. So, for example, okay. if we if we go to the browser. Here's my Chrome. You can see it over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to touch it. Yeah, All it does is good. open up the browser. That's it. Now, the browser yeah, will allow that, me that, to that's go That's what to, happens on my computer, but not on this one. Well, yeah, it should be. So I'm going to go to, uh, uh, let's say, CNN, because that's easy to type. Put mm -hmm. in, the, in, in CNN.com. And there we are. There's CNN. Okay. okay. So I don't know what it's doing, you know, what, what message you're getting there. But when it opens up, when you see the browser, so notice the browser, here's the browser, it's got CNN. You, you see the, the address bar at the top that says cnn.com? Mm -hmm. So on your one, just type something in there. Whatever, whatever strange place it's going to now that it's not allowing you to access, just type in cnn.com right in there oh, and oh press enter, uh, oh, and it'll take oh, you to you. Amazon or CNN or wherever it is that you want to go. Right? This, the browser it, doesn't it, do anything. The browser is just like does. a... It's like a motor car. It takes you, you know, it takes you to okay. the internet, but okay. Uh, okay. It, it, it doesn't itself do anything. So that should be fine. Anybody else? That's, that's Any other what question? I did. It does. Thank yeah, you. you got it. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Anybody else? Yes. You said on the icon to rem to move them. Uh, you say just press on the icon and it would say mine says remove or short or shortcut and some that's of them. That's right. That's right. So when that little menu comes up. Now, don't press remove because it's going to throw the whole app away. Now, they don't actually say that to you, which is a bit silly. Now, it's, it's ready to move. So if you keep your finger on the, on the icon now, you hold it down. Don't press on that, you know, don't type delete or, or, or uninstall. Hold the icon and now you can drag it with your finger from left to right. Okay. No, the other question, some of these apps that I have on here, like DoorDash and so are not opening up. Even Play Store is not opening up. It's just, I'm just up, but I don't get anything. I don't app? get remove or shortcut. No, but I mean, when you tap the app, that something's got to happen. Yeah, it opens up, and I, I see the yeah. app actually opens. That's right, but you're not, you've got to hold it down. So watch here. You see this, this app over there that says Earthlink? I, moved, I just moved it during the class. Okay, so I'm going to hold it down. There's the little menu. Can you see the little menus popped up, right? See the little menu? Can you if some it? of them is not popping up, it's just opening up. No, no, you've got to hold it down. It's, it's, you know, this is actually a silly way to have done it for them because touching it opens it up. So the difference between a touch and a hold down is just like a second or two, right? And so sometimes when we try and hold it down, you actually just touched it first and then held it down. It detects the touch and it opens it up. But now I'm in a position, watch, I'm going to move that, that icon. And it's back where it was originally. You see that? See where it's down there now? I moved oh, yeah. it from up there. It's not rocket science. I would have done it differently, but I'm not Google. I wouldn't have used the same thing, you know, touching it to open it and to move it. So sometimes it's a little tricky. So you've got to press carefully on it and hold it down for two seconds until the menu opens up. Don't let go. Leave your finger there. And now just you can drag that icon. In fact, you can drag it over the edge of the page onto the next page. So if you drag that icon to the right margin, it will go into the next page and then you can drag it to the next page. So if you've got some, 
some apps that you don't use very often, you can put them on page two or page three, which is what I've done. So apps that I, I like, I don't want to get rid of them, but I don't use them very often. They're on pages two and three like that, just by dragging them across. It takes a little practice. I, I agree it's, it's a silly way to do it. There should have been some, some better way. There should have been some button or something or menu entry. That little menu that opens up, one of the options should be move icon. And you would click on that and then you could move the icon, but that's not the way Android does it. So I, I, I agree with you. But again, you don't have to do it very often. So uh, once you've figured it out, once you've got the hang of it, you'll see it's actually quite easy. Okay. Any more? I wish I could give you a better answer, but that's it. You know, I sometimes have the same problem. I've got to do it two or three times before it actually works. Anybody else have an, another question or a suggestion or a complaint or a, anything? Now's the time. Was this useful, by the way? Yes. Are Are you going to start the class back up again? Very much. Say again. I'm sorry. Are you going to start the class back up again? Uh, Yeah, that's that's up to uh, to uh, Sharita at 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 Benson. When we reschedule, we will rerun these classes. We always do. Uh, Historically, we didn't run it in the summer. So now would be the end and we'd start again, you know, after the summer. Obviously this year is completely different to all other years. So whether we're gonna have classes in the summer or not, I think still has to be decided. Uh, If they wanna have classes in the summer, you know, starting next week or next month, no problem, I'm available. I'm not going anywhere, nor nor, nor is anybody else. But if we're gonna still continue to obey the, you know, the summer schedule, then there won't be classes until okay, whenever we so start up again. Like hey, before. if I can just cut in. So, um, hey, Sharita, yeah. good morning. Hey, morning. So next week, there is a new schedule that will be sent out over the weekend. So um, I know Jeff will be doing um, intro to Windows 10 starting on Monday. Right. Now, That's in wonderful. regards to doing another session of the Android class, um, we'll have to talk further about that um, to see if we can get it on the schedule next week or the following week. But um, we'll let you guys know. You just have to pay attention to the schedule that they sent right. out, to see right. whether or okay. not uh, the Thank class you. is be offered. Okay. Right. Okay, so. Sarita. Yes. I know you did an overview of the iPhone, iPad. Yes. Do you think that Jeff can do a more detailed class on the iPhone and the iPad like he did with the Android? Yes. So um, I need to yeah, add I wrapped up the it. iPhone class on yesterday. So right. um, in that class. Yes. So we've talked, we've talked about that. So I'll talk further with Jeff to see his availability about him doing his version of the class. Because I know there's some things he probably can't tell, teach you guys that I did it. Right. Okay. okay. Um, but um, Jeff and I will have a conversation about that. And you just pay attention to the um, schedule. And that's how you know whether or not the class was added. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Sarita. You're welcome. Got, okay. This is my it. first Android class. <laughs> that's why I was wondering where you're going to be able to do it again. I knew about the iPhone, but I didn't know about the Android. I just Android. Said, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk won't about the that. Android be on the YouTube. Yes, all the videos are uploaded to YouTube because um we do record these classes like it's recording now, um and we upload them so you can always rewatch the videos. Okay. Of what's been taught. Mm-hmm. But then if he does the i the Android class again, um it will be what would i say it will be a repeat if you get what i'm saying okay right jeff correct me if i'm wrong jeff i'm sorry say again what won't it be a repeat basically yes, yes. Material it'll be an exact repeat. repeat well you know no two classes i ever do are exactly the same right as you guys have probably noticed uh but the material this material will be exactly the same i use the same material the class is always different depending on you know what comes into my mind on that day or questions that somebody asks, but it's 90% of it is exactly the same. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. Again, uh, send me the email and I will send you the material. And um, if you, 
you know, you have questions as well, just send me the uh, you, you can ask me anytime you like, and I will be more than happy to answer questions if I can. So just, you know, the best way to do it is via 